Bonjour, bienvenue à tous, bienvenue à cet événement, euh, ce webinar qui va nous permettre de présenter une nouvelle solution d'ouverture pour la création automatique des tickets d'incident dans SAP. La solution s'appelle ITSM Connector pour SAP. En effet, chaque jour, de très nombreux rapports d'erreurs sont transmis incomplets au support SAP, ce qui entraîne euh, de la part des équipes du service desk énormément de temps consacré pour recueillir toutes ces informations contextuelles qui manquent. Elles sont pour cela besoin de contacter les utilisateurs SAP par téléphone, par email et parfois dans des langages différents, comme les supports à l'étranger par exemple. Et ce temps est consacré donc à la collecte d'informations plutôt qu'à la recherche d'une solution au problème. Aujourd'hui, Thomas, Thomas Solix, CTO chez STA Consulting, qui est notre nouveau partenaire, va vous présenter donc cette solution, le TSM Connector pour SAP, qui permet de créer directement dans votre plateforme TSM existante, depuis votre unité SAP, que ce soit du Sabri ou du Fury, des tickets d'incident dont les champs vont être renseignés automatiquement. Tout d'abord, je vais introduire une barture, donc euh, une barture, nous sommes une société française euh, basée en France, qui euh, existe depuis 2006, et nous proposons des, des, des atomes SAP qui sont édités par des acteurs étrangers et dont nous assurons la commercialisation en Europe ou en France. Et nos solutions sont organisées sur les trois axes, et comme vous pouvez le voir, ces axes sont la livraison continue, le DevOps, la JT, ce qu'on peut appeler le IT pour IT. Ensuite, un axe qui permet de, re de regrouper nos solutions autour de la sécurité et de la conformité, en particulier une solution qui permet de répondre aux besoins, effectivement aux besoins RGPD. Et enfin, euh, des solutions autour de la digitalisation des processus et de l'UX avec amélioration des expériences utilisateurs euh, sur SAP. Nos clients, qui sont-ils Ce sont, donc, euh, comme vous pouvez le voir, euh, des clients qui sont répartis euh, sur euh, plusieurs secteurs, mais tous de très grands comptes, souvent internationaux. Euh, je vous laisse découvrir tous ces noms. Tout au long de cette séance, vous allez pouvoir poser vos questions. Pour cela, c'est très simple. Je vous encourage d'ailleurs à le faire. Euh, pour cela, vous allez dans le bandeau à droite, vous pouvez cliquer sur le, dans les questions. Et vous aurez alors une pop-up qui va apparaître. Vous pouvez taper votre question et euh, l'envoyer. Nous répondrons à ces questions à la fin de chaque session. Donc maintenant, je laisse la parole à Tamas. Euh, hello Tamas. Uh, so now let's discover your solution. Uh, I'm sure everybody will enjoy it. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tamas Holic. I'm the CTO at STA Consulting. And today I'll give you an overview of our product called ITSM Connector for SAP applications. I'd like to start with a quick introduction. So STA Consulting is a, a software vendor based in Budapest, Hungary. Um, we're an SAP Silver partner, additionally a ServiceNow partner. We focus on building SAP integration solutions, especially packaged software. Uh, we also do some custom development projects, but, but our focus is really on delivering SAP add-on products. We have uh, more than 30 clients already um, on four different continents. So as you can see, we have no focus on any in industry or geography. Most of our clients are in Europe, especially in the German-speaking region. Let me talk a little bit about the pain points of SAP support. So basically, this, these are the reasons why we've developed this um, solution. Uh, the problem number one is usually the poor quality of incoming tickets. So SAP end users tend to enter very little in information into their problem descriptions and then the service desk teams have to spend a lot of time on uh, getting that inf information from the end user. Without basic details, they're not even able to reproduce the problem um, and of course they're not able to work on a solution. Connected to this, they'll need to manually route and categorize um, all the incidents based on that limited information that they get from the end users. And the third one is the high number of duplicate incidents. Um, so uh, in SAP there are some typical examples of issues that affect maybe hundreds or thousands of users and in that case you will have a lot of phone calls or emails going to your service desk and then your service desk teams have to manage that manually which takes a lot of manual effort. The next one is an underutilized knowledge base. So even if you spend a lot of time and money on um, building a good knowledge base in ServiceNow, for example, um, if your end users don't use it, then it's just a waste of time and money. The next one is the typical training problem. So um, very frequently beginner SAP users create incidents um, or submit error reports for things that are 
working perfectly fine. The end user just doesn't know how um, to use the software, how it should um, um, behave. And then s uh, still your support teams have to spend time on, on tickets like those. The last one is the need to manually create incidents uh, when alerts are triggered by one of the monitoring solutions of SAP. So if you use, for example, Solution Manager for monitoring and alerting purposes, the standard solution that SAP provides is a notification via email or SMS to your basis team, but they still need to create incidents manually. So because of all these uh, typical problems, we decided to create an SAP add-on that can help you with this. This is a certified ABAP add-on that you need to install on the SAP application server. And once uh, it's done, your end users will be able to create tickets from the SAP screens. And also, um, you can configure it to automatically create incidents when you have alerts triggered by Focus Run or Solution Manager. We also have um, ServiceNow app. That is an optional component of the whole solution, and it provides additional features and um, enhanced reporting on the ServiceNow side. Let's discuss the two different use cases. The first one is when you have your SAP systems and um, ServiceNow uh, as a ticketing tool, and if you install our add-ons, then your end users will be able to submit tickets directly from uh, SAP. It's important to mention that uh, although uh, ServiceNow is our primary integration platform, we love to work with it, the program works out of the box with many different ticketing tools as well, like Jira, MicroFocus, Service Manager, BMC Remedy, and more. This is the second um, use case when you uh, use a monitoring tool by SAP, for example, Solution Manager or Focus Run to monitor your systems jobs, iDocs, business processes, uh, and many different things. And if you have an alert created, then our product can forward that to uh, the ticketing tool that you have. So it's going to create an incident automatically. Let's take a look at the architecture quickly. We have an SAP system on the left on which we have installed the uh, SAP add-on. This can be any kind of an SAP system that runs on the ABAP stack. S4 HANA, ECC, HCM, CRM, whatever. And in this example, we have ServiceNow on the right. So when the end user runs into an issue and starts the ticket creation process, the program will uh, send a web service request to the standard REST API of ServiceNow to create a new ticket. After that, it's going to um, uh, gather important information about the SAP system, user, program, and so on, and attach everything through the REST API to the new ticket. And the third call is made if you install this coped application, and then all the SAP technical details are going to be saved to custom tables. Um, and the benefit of that is you can use that data in your reports, dashboards, you can use it in your uh, business logic that you implement in ServiceNow, and you can put anything on the uh, ticket form uh, if it's important. Additionally, there's a fourth integration point, which is valid only for uh, the monitoring uh, scenario. Um, and this allows you to automatically close incidents that are related to alerts, which are confirmed. And the other way around, so if you create an inc um, if you close an incident in ServiceNow, uh, it can automatically confirm the Solution Manager alert. Apart from this, uh, there's no um, data go going back to SAP. So basically, this is an outbound only um, integration data is going out of SAP to ServiceNow but not uh, the other way around. And also it's important to mention that um, it's not only incident uh, that can be created We're using this tool. Um, we have customers who use it for creating service requests. It works with case management and also uh, it can be integrated with the event management module of ServiceNow. All right, so let's see how the uh, product looks like uh, in a live demo. So I will log into this system, which is an ECC system where I execute transaction FB50. So here I want to create a GL account document, but then I get an error message that the posting period is not open. So this will be the example error that I want to uh, submit to the service desk. All I need to do is either double click on the SAP icon at the bottom or go to the help menu. 
and choose create support message. When I press that, our add-on is started and the first thing that it asks for is a confirmation to take a screenshot. I will allow this because this is not a sensitive HR or finance transaction. And then the main screen appears where I can enter a subject. Long description. And here comes the interesting part at the bottom. You have fields related to your connected IT some platform, in this case, ServiceNow. This is just a default template with the impact, urgency, severity, and the assignment group. All our customers want to customize this. I will uh, show you uh, some examples of that. It's absolutely possible. You can remove fields that are not necessary here. You can add extra fields that you might want uh, to be populated by the end users. The second important thing here is that the group is populated automatically. We are on a finance transaction, so that's why this incident will end up in the finance team. Um, you can set up rules in either SAP or alternatively in ServiceNow um, to automatically route the incident to the relevant support group. I will take this checkbox to open the ticket in a browser window once it is created and I press send. When I press send, the backend SAP component creates the incident in ServiceNow, generates some attachments, uploads everything to that. And because I take that little checkbox, it will open that in a browser window. By default, um, this is open via the service portal. So if your end users have access to the service now portal, they can immediately see a little um, overview of the ticket. Um, but now, of course, let's jump um, in here with the service desk user and uh, see what happened. This is the instant, um, instance. This is the incident that was uh, just created. Let me click on that and let's go through what we have here. Uh, you've already seen the first benefit of the product, end users can create tickets um, pretty easily. The second benefit is uh, the automatic routing and categorization. So you can see that the category is now set to software, subcategory is set to SAP. You can even um, uh, create a new contact type um, sent from SAP. You can distinguish uh, incidents that were created based on a phone call or an email from the ones that were created directly from SAP. The open buy and caller fields are uh, set um, to the SAP end user. Here we have all the user input. Assignment group is set to SAP finance based on the rules that we define based on transaction code in this example. Business services populated automatically. The configuration item is based on the SAP system from which I submitted the ticket. So you have fully automated and 100% uh, accurate uh, routing here and categorization. The next benefit is here. You have different attachment. Obviously, we have the screenshot uh, that was taken when we started the whole process. We have the uh, output of transaction SU53, which is a standard SAP authorization report. Uh, in this example, this is going to be empty. In another, uh, another use case that I will show, this is going to be uh, meaningful. Here we will have all the uh, failed authorization checks for uh, the user. We also have an Excel sheet with all the um, screen content. Let me check, we have some chat messages here. Okay, that's not around the audio. Of course, we'll have a Q&A section at the end, so I will answer all the questions. Um, in this column, you have um, all the fields that were displayed on the screen and the program gathers automatically all the technical uh, data. So if this incident ends up with a developer, uh, then they will know that in this program, this screen, this field, which was the posting date, the value was today's date. You have the company code along with its description, you have the document type with its description and so on. So everything is provided and users don't have to type in so much information. They don't have a, made, a chance to make a typing mistake and um, you also get the technical details as well. All right, finally, we have a PDF file that is generated um, that contains a header about the affected user and system, all the user input, and now comes the really interesting part. You have all the details of the running program, including the title, transaction, program, screen number, subscreen number, component, package, and so on. You have all the details of the last message, message class number, type, 
even the long description from the SAP help is added here. Additionally, after a certain kernel release, you get the um, exact source code position where this error message was placed. So that's really, really useful for developers. They can directly navigate to that uh, source code where they uh, happen. We have uh, another section here on the SAP GUI uh, information. This was a GUI for Windows with this version from that laptop and so on. You have all the details of the backend user, including salutation, language key, time zone everything that you need to get in touch. Um, you have all the details of the SAP system. And this last section contains all the components that uh, are in the system with version information. So the idea is to provide a complete information package with every single incident that is submitted through this add-on. These are um, the most important attachments. There are different attachments that are attached to specific kind of errors. I will show some examples uh, later on. Uh, and uh, it's important to mention that whatever you've seen so far is possible with only the SAP add-on and, and you don't need the ServiceNow add-on uh, for this. However, if you do install the ServiceNow app from the store, you will get one extra tab sheet here. It's called SAP technical details. And for each incident, you will have the same data that you've seen in the Excel sheet and in the uh, PDF file are saved to service now tables. Here you have the same things. Program details, message details, user details, host information, screen field contents, system components, and so on. The big benefit of this is if you really need any of these on the incident form, it's very easy in ServiceNow to put it there. And of course, you can use all this data to create really nice SAP incident dashboards. Uh, we actually deliver a default incident dashboard with the ServiceNow app. And uh, that contains some pre-configured uh, reports here. You can check out the number of incidents per system, per priority. You can check the most frequent dialogue error messages, incidents per transaction or module, incidents per GUI type. Here you can see that this also works with CRM, web GUI, or any DSP-based UI, Fiori, sub-GUI, web GUI, web GUI, Pro, and so on. You have separate sheets for background jobs uh, that fail. You have separate sheets for uh, runtime errors, short dumps. And here you have a sheet for our second major use case. So if you use monitoring and alerting and create incidents based on alerts, then this is the reporting uh, part that shows you more information about uh, incidents created for, for alerts. All right, let me show you some additional features using screenshots. For example, this is how you can customize the screen. Here we have two examples from customers. Uh, the first one wanted to have a radio button group on the left side, <clears throat> and um, that actually controls what kind of ticket is created, if it's an incident or service request. We can have uh, in links to the internal uh, uh, websites that you might have. Um, this other customer wanted to have uh, custom uh, drop-down menus with uh, specific values. So, we can implement basically anything that you'd like to have on that uh, pop-up window. Um, here you can see how the management of duplicate incidents is uh, simplified using this product. Um, so if you have an issue that is already reported, um, let's say you have an issue in a specific transaction and someone creates a ticket, then the next person who runs into the same issue and wants to, to create another ticket is informed with another pop-up window here we can see that um, in this example we have one ticket created from the same transaction. It's actually a runtime error. So the next person will uh, get this pop-up and then they will have the opportunity to link the two tickets together. In this case you can see it's a JIRA incident linked to another um, uh, incident. And this really helps the duplicate management on the service desk side. It provides transparency and you can close all the connected incidents at once. The next one is showing you how you can embed a knowledge base search inside SAP. Um, if you enter something in the subject and hit enter, then um, there's going to be a full text search carried out in the ServiceNow knowledge base and the relevant 
articles are displayed at the bottom part of the screen and then the end user can double click on it and it's um, opening um, the knowledge base article in a browser window and this allows end users to get a solution for their problems themselves without getting in touch with the service desk. The next slide shows you an overview of the key user concept that you can implement. Basically that means that you can group your users into two different groups, simple end users who are not able to create tickets in the external ticketing tool and key users who can do so. And simple end users uh, must choose a key user from this drop down um, list at the top of the screen uh, which can be populated using uh, many different kind of uh, business logic. So from a specific transaction or a different module you can have different key users that you can select and once that um, is sent to the key user then um, uh, he or she will receive an email or an SAP notification uh, with all the attachments so the key user can verify if it's a real issue or not if it's not then they can just simply reject this ticket to the end user but if it's a real issue then they can um, uh, forward it to uh, the service desk. On the next slide you can see the same functionality uh, from a Fiori app. So you have a similar pop-up window where you can enter subject, long description, attach files, take screenshots and when you submit the ticket then um, the same process is going to be started. In this um, case however we have additional details related to the Fiori application including form factor, uh, application type, title, version numbers, URLs, theme, um, browser type and so on. Alright, let's quickly discuss the monitoring and alerting in, uh, integration. So here at the bottom you can see that um, um, monitoring tool from SAP creates a new alert and then our add-on will create a corresponding new incident in ServiceNow. Of course that um, gets into in-progress state sooner or later it gets resolved and in that case it can confirm the alert in Solution Manager. Naturally it, it can be cancelled before, in that case you get an update as well and um, as I mentioned the confirming the alert can also resolve the incident so the interface can be bidirectional. Here we have a few screenshots. At the top you can see an example of the alert inbox where we already have um, an alert uh, sent to ServiceNow. Here we have the ticket number, the comments and so on. And here is the corresponding incident in ServiceNow. Again, you can do all the uh, rules to populate the fields. Um, here we have this short description. Uh, and it's uh, very important that you have an attachment which uh, contains the standard um, the information from Solution Manager including links to the alert, to the system, description of the problem, all the metrics underlying the alert. Uh, so it's really very uh, useful. Alright, so let's um, summarize what we've seen. <coughs> we have the different pain points of the SAP support that are actually solved by our add-on. So the first one is solved by the automated data collection. The second one is solved with the automatic categorization and routing. Problem number three can be enhanced or simplified with the uh, automatic parent-child relationship feature. Number four can be uh, solved with embedding the knowledge base search right into the SAP user interface. Problem number five can be solved with the key user, user con, uh, concept, and the last one is, of course, saved with the solved with the automatic incident or event creation. Here we have uh, an overview uh, of all the features on the left, the benefits on the right, and all the in involved parties in between. Obviously, the quick ticket creation uh, helps the end users; um, they can save time. The automated data collection and attachments will help everybody in the process and it results in a faster ticket resolution and less system downtime. The embedded knowledge base search is good for the end users. They can get tickets solved. Uh, well, actually, they get the solution for the problems um, themselves. They don't even need to create a ticket. And of course, that's good for the service desk as well. The duplicate management helps the service desk teams 
just like the auth automatic um, categorization and routing. The key user concept can help the end user. They can get a solution from their um, key users very fast and of course helps the service desk. They will get less uh, incoming tickets. The automatic reaction to alerts is mostly good for the basis team and you can save time with that. It's also important that if you attach the same attachments that are pro the, our product generates, then um, uh, SAP central support can also provide you a faster support because they will have all the information that they need. And the last one is the SAP incident dashboard that allows you to get an overview of your uh, SAP incident flow. Uh, it's mostly good for the management. All right, here we have some case studies. The first one is with a pharma company who compared their tickets that were submitted through email, phone, and uh, service portal to the ones that uh, were submitted through our tool. And they experienced a huge decrease in the average ticket resolution time. Uh, also a 12% decrease in the number of tickets with an SLA breach. And one of the major factors uh, contributing to this was a 91% decrease in the number of transfers of incidents between support groups. They could very easily set up a rule set in SAP that based on a transaction code or module they could route all the tickets to the relevant support group. The next example is a um, steel manufacturer based in Spain who can spare uh, about uh, 50,000 euros every year related to SAP ticket resolution and they also experienced a significant um, ticket resolution speed up. And the last example is the system downtime at a global manufacturing company who had a problem in a, one of their programs controlling the production lines. So this company couldn't manufacture their products for one hour and they uh, lost half a million euros in that uh, one hour period. And if you apply the average ticket resolution time speed up that we have, then you can see that already there's a, uh, that you can s um, save a lot of money with one single production system issue. All right, let's see what we have on our roadmap. Um, the first important one is uh, the integration with the RevTrack, which is a great change management tool. Um, and we'll focus on the testing process. Um, so you'll be able to create RevTrack tickets directly from SAP GUI or, or Fiori applications. And the second one is the integration with Neptune software. So basically you will be able to uh, create tickets directly from any Neptune application. Um, and additionally, all the Neptune specific information will be attached to the tickets. That's, that's also very important. All right, the last slide is about uh, the comparison with the uh, custom development. Uh, we are pretty short on time, so I'd like to um, just mention that the only pro for custom development is uh, the ease to get approval for an internal project, but there are a lot of cons for this. You will need to take care of all the different upgrades of your SAP systems and the uh, ITSM platforms and so on. Um, but um, if you choose to implement this product, then you will have more pros than cons, obviously. So uh, we'll send out the slide deck later on uh, so you can uh, check this out in detail. All right, so please let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Hello, Thomas, how are you? Hi, hi, good morning, everybody. Bonjour, bonjour, Thomas. Uh, uh, bon, nous avons quelques questions. Uh, we have some questions, so I will translate. If you can make little small sentences, so I can translate uh, uh, very quickly, it will be easier. Uh, and the first one, it's about the pros and cons. And they want. Uh, les, donc la première question est à propos des pour et des contre, euh, des avantages et inconvénients. Mais euh, on est en train de rechercher la, la slide pour la vous repasser. So uh, we are going to really to show the, the slide again, but we have to find it out. Uh, so the, during this time, uh, we have another question. Uh, um, what about the implementation? What are the means for the implementation? Uh, implementation is really simple. So technically, it's about one hour. Uh, really, you just have to um, uh, install the certified SAP add-on using Transaction Saint. Um, and it's even faster for the ServiceNow app. You just log on to the ServiceNow store with your credentials press install and, and that's it. You have to create a user, assign a role, and you're finished. 
Um, however, oh, if you... oh, 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 oh. I have to translate a bit. Yeah. Sorry for that. Sorry, sorry. Donc, vous, avez compris, vous avez compris qu'il s'agit juste d'une translation simple hein, de base. Donc, vous allez, sur la, vous allez récupérer votre, votre code, vous l'installez, et en une heure, c'est fait. Donc, c'est très, très simple. So, now you can go. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, we need translation. So, you are passionate. Um, <laughs> so, after that, if the customer has any custom requirements that they want to have on that little pop-up, uh, there were uh, some examples in the, in the video, then that usually takes between one and five days to implement. So if you want to have extra fields or remove some fields, that can be done in about a week maximum. Donc, euh, si vous avez bien compris, si vous avez besoin de quelques développements euh, supplémentaires euh, par rapport à ce qui est proposé en, en standard, c'est-à-dire par exemple la pop-up qu'on l'a vu dans l'exemple, euh, ça peut se faire en quelques jours de conseil. C'est le conseil que, du, du consulting que nous, on, on vous propose, donc effectivement, pour vous accompagner. Mais vous avez pu le voir, la solution est very, très simple. C'est une very simple solution. Et, euh, et donc, très facile de prise en main, very easy to understand. Euh, et donc, euh, ça se fait très rapidement en réalité. OK, thank you, Tamad. Euh, donc, vous pouvez voir à l'écran, you can see on the screen, les, les, pro, les pour et les contre, the pros, the pros and cons. Uh, do you have any comments on it, uh, for the comments, Tamas? Uh, well, I studied French in high school, uh, but <laughs> honestly speaking, I have opened it in, in, in English uh, on a separate <laughs> window. So basically, what is important that um, if you implement the product, then, um, then us as a vendor can provide everything to you, the support, um, the um, managing the changes if anything is upgraded and so on. And, and that's really hard if you have to do that as a custom development every time there is an upgrade in any of your mm. systems. Oui, donc, euh, comme euh, Tom Dallas a déjà expliqué tout à l'heure et comme on le voit là, le problème, c'est quand vous faites le développement vous-même, c'est effectivement qu'il va falloir suivre tous les... Vous êtes dépendant de plusieurs éditeurs, donc euh, entre SAP, votre outil de ticketing et, et éventuellement d'autres solutions que vous allez connecter, il faut en permanence euh, suivre les versioning, les upgrades, et donc ça demande énormément de temps, ça demande des compétences, ça demande de la connaissance, euh, donc euh, euh, c'est forcément très chronophage et aussi euh, très, ça, peut, ça peut vous coûter cher. Uh, yeah, maybe one more thing that is mm -hmm. it's really important. Let's say you have a good developer who implements this functionality for you, but what if he or she leaves the company? Mm -hmm. You cannot um, have that knowledge or, or have to invest a lot in transferring that knowledge to the new employees, but you don't have to care about this if you use a, a standard product from us. Oui, donc alors je vais euh, traduire la, la réponse de Tamas et je vais un peu ajouter euh, quelques ingrédients à ma sauce. Hein. C'est-à-dire qu'effectivement, si la personne qui s'occupait de ce, ce développement en interne euh, ne va pas forcément rester pour tout le temps chez vous, donc elle va partir. Et euh, donc vous êtes très dépendant d'une ressource dans ce cas-là, euh, qui, qui peut être rare en plus, parce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui maîtrise les différents environnements, ça peut être, ça peut être rare. Et donc euh, ça vous libère, le fait de recourir à ITSM Connector for SAP, ça vous libère de ce, de ce poids de, de dépendre d'une personne uniquement. Uh, and we have uh, one final question, and after that, uh, I think we are going to stop. On a une dernière question. It's about the pricing. Yeah, um, pricing is based on the number of users um, for the main functionality where the end users can submit the tickets. So basically, you have to count how many dialogue users you have in total in the systems that you want to use the product in. Um, yeah, please go ahead with the translation. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. At <laughs> the same time, I, I was reading another question. So I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries. So, the, so for the main functionality where the end users can submit the tickets, the basis for the price is the total number of SAP users. Oui, oui, tout à fait. Donc, ce sont des abonnements. It's a uh, yearly uh, subscription. Ce sont des abonnements annuels qui dépendent du nombre d'utilisateurs de la solution. Alors, vous avez un, un core system. Uh, I am adding some, in, some more information. Vous avez un, un, la, la fonctionnalité principale, donc avec un certain prix. Et si vous rajoutez des fonctionnalités qui sont aussi disponibles euh, dans notre catalogue, eh c'est un coût supplémentaire. Et donc, vous pouvez nous contacter. Euh, il y a des prix, c'est par tranche, selon le nombre d'utilisateurs. Uh, depending on the number of uh, users, you have some, uh, some ranges of prices. Uh, donc, uh, voilà, nous sommes à votre disposition pour répondre à ces questions. Euh, nous avons une question donc, euh, à, à propos. Euh, so we have a we had a question about the uh, Neptune uh, implementation. Uh, the, the fact that ITSM Connector is working with Neptune, but we responded to it directly. Donc la réponse sur euh, le fait qu'on puisse connecter à Neptune, vous avez apporté la réponse, Tamas. Et uh, we have another question. Is that on premise? Donc est-ce que c'est on premise? Uh, you can install this add-on on on-premise systems and also in cloud-based systems, which are uh, in a private cloud. 
So um, you cannot install anything on, on the, the public cloud offering of SAP, which let's say you have an instance and uh, 100 customers use the mm -hmm. same instance, so that's out of scope. If you have a private cloud or an on-prem system, then it's going to work fine. Ok, bon, donc vous avez, vous voyez, vous avez compris, vous avez la, le choix entre on-premise ou euh, sur le cloud. Uh, very, very last question is uh, what are the advantages uh, compared to the standard solution? I, I think it's compared to the SAP solution. The solution manager, uh, because um, there's a similar functionality in uh, this SAP solution manager ITSM module that you can um, create a solution manager incident. But um, of course, if you use an external ticketing tool, then um, SAP doesn't offer any standard way to transfer that solution manager incident to ServiceNow and all the advanced features are missing from the st standard solution manager uh, uh, solution like duplicate management, knowledge base search and so on. That's simply not there. OK, donc vous avez compris, effectivement, euh, il y a une solution ITSM à l'intérieur de SAP qui est disponible évidemment dans le, dans le contexte SAP, euh, mais elle ne, elle ne permet pas de, de faire les connexions, elle ne pro propose pas des connexions vers des outils extérieurs comme vous pouvez avoir avec Jira ou avec ServiceNow et euh, certaines fonctionnalités avancées que propose ITSM Connector pour SAP, comme le déduplica la déduplication des, des tickets ou le no la knowledge base, la, la base de connaissances, ne sont pas disponibles non plus. Donc, euh, ça, ça, cet outil représente vraiment un avantage par rapport à ce coffre de façon standard uh, SAP. So it's it's very clear. Thank you, Thomas, for you for you. Uh, being with us. Donc vous avez Thank pu remarquer much. dans la vous avez pu remarquer dans la présentation qu'il y a eu deux types de sons différents. C'est parce que euh, en ce moment chez à côté de Tamas, chez Thomas il y a des, des travaux et donc il y avait pas mal de bruit de fond. You heard a lot of uh, sound when during the video. I am explaining why. Um, et donc, c'est pour ça que j'ai entendu des différences de son, parce que nous avons dû faire un petit remontage de la présentation pour que ce soit plus agréable pour vous. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you for attending. Thank you. I'm very happy to, to welcome you uh, within our portfolio. Thank uh, you. It's my pleasure. Uh, donc, uh, uh, nous espérons que vous serez intéressés par la solution Thomas qui nous paraît très, très prometteuse. Uh, je vous remercie à tous d'avoir participé à cet événement. Et euh, j'espère vous revoir euh, très rapidement euh, déjà à la convention USF euh, au mois d'octobre. En présentiel, je croise les doigts et tout le monde touche du bois autour de moi. Là, on est tous en train de lancer nos petits gris-gris euh, pour euh, espérer ça. Et aussi rapidement, peut-être aussi chez nous, chez vous. Euh, C'est ce que nous espérons tous. Je vous souhaite une bonne journée et puis à bientôt. Au revoir.